Hello and welcome back to my 10 favorite people. Hope you're doing well. We've been talking about the increasing likelihood of a left translated cycle for Bitcoin for quite a while now, but we kept saying the market needed some type of major catalyst to trigger that type of rally. And I think we can all agree that after the white swan event that occurred this week, we now have the perfect catalyst and narrative for that next major rally higher. And now you may think I'm talking about the Ethereum ETF approval, and of course that was a major catalyst in itself, but the real major white swan event this week is the complete 180 we've seen in the US government and how crypto-friendly legislation now has bipartisan support for the first time since I joined this market in 2017. And in my opinion, the markets are nowhere near pricing this in yet. We've been waiting for regulatory clarity for years and years now. And back when I first joined the space, both parties and the entire government was against crypto. Recently, we've seen Republicans slightly shift to be a little more pro-crypto, but with it being a election year, I think the Democrats have realized that they can no longer be anti this space and that a lot of voters might vote against them on this topic alone. And that, of course, gives us the perfect catalyst for some friendly legislation. And when you combine that with the way the Senate overturned SAB 121, which, of course, was something put in by the SEC to slow down crypto adoption and try and hinder the space, we're just seeing this incredible trend of government support for this asset class for the very first time. And what do you know, all of this is occurring around the same time we're getting not only a Bitcoin spot ETF, but we're now expected to get an Ethereum one as well. And of course, getting the Bitcoin ETF was great and we saw amazing inflows and ended up getting this big rally. But the special thing about the Ethereum ETF is one, Ethereum pays a yield and the SEC really tried to argue that it became a security when it flipped to proof of stake. But if Ethereum gets a spot ETF like we just saw with the recent approval, we now have an argument that maybe proof of stake assets can get their own spot ETFs as well. And of course, the issuers aren't allowed to pay the staking yield to the ETF holders currently, but I wouldn't be surprised if that changes. And I truly can't believe the bearish sentiment I'm seeing. I'm seeing a lot of people saying the inflows aren't gonna be good. Bitcoin had a successful ETF because Bitcoin has an easy to follow narrative because it's digital gold and Bitcoin has the brand recognition. Maybe there aren't gonna be incredible inflows into Ethereum immediately because of grayscale unlocks or whatever. But what do you think institutional allocators are going to do when they see that Ethereum is not only the second largest asset in the space, it also allows dApps and applications to run on top of it. It has a deflationary monetary policy, which means the supply is constrained. And if we do see more activity on the network, thanks to these new ETFs, that's going to make it even more deflationary. And of course, it pays a yield, and maybe in the beginning, this yield won't go to the ETF holders, but at least the people holding Ethereum directly will be able to take advantage of that yield. So not only do we have a decreasing supply, we have an asset that pays a 3 to 4% yield, and then we have the largest asset manager in the world, BlackRock, building tokenized treasury funds on the Ethereum chain. And with all of this stuff going on, all anybody can talk about is, yeah, the flows aren't gonna be as good as Bitcoin. Nobody's gonna want this. Nobody's gonna care about this. In my humble opinion, I think that's completely wrong. I think Ethereum has underperformed quite a bit recently because of course Bitcoin had its ETF and a lot of money was going into Bitcoin, but then Solana was taking in a lot of the speculative meme coin mania money and Ethereum was kind of stuck in this awkward spot in the middle where it wasn't getting as much activity as the previous bull market, so it wasn't that deflationary, but then it also wasn't getting the flows Bitcoin was getting because it hadn't had its ETF yet. And of course, we thought the SEC was gonna deny it because that was the indication they were giving us. But in the past one week, maybe one week and a half, we've seen this completely flip on its head 
And I don't think this move we've seen from Ethereum so far has fully priced that in. And of course, there's gonna be volatility. Maybe with the grayscale unlocks, we have a quick sell-off and then we rally higher, or maybe we just take off because we end up getting these ETFs launched within a week or two. I do think it's very likely we rally into the launch. If these ETF buyers are gonna come in and buy Ethereum, I think they're gonna want to, I think the issuers are gonna want to rally the price as much as they can before the ETF, because then they can just sell it to the ETF buyers at higher prices. And then of course, the real moment of truth is gonna be seeing what the inflows end up being like. But I think many investors are losing the forest for the trees here by thinking about how this may affect Ethereum's price over the next week or two, maybe three weeks, four weeks. But when you zoom out and look at the monetary policy, the staking yield, and what BlackRock is building on the chain, I have a hard time believing that institutional capital won't flow into these ETFs after the support we've seen from the US government for this industry. And of course, because of all this excitement around Ethereum, we're seeing Solana struggle a little bit. It's kind of dominated the smart contract narrative recently. Maybe it's not gonna get its ETF immediately, but I do think it'll get one eventually. And I do think that everyone is kind of starting to have that conversation now. I don't know when that ETF ends up happening. It could be six months from now, it could be 12. Of course, it's gonna depend who wins the election, but I'm still incredibly bullish on Solana because I do think institutions will use Ethereum more because it's more established, more decentralized, and maybe they don't mind paying the higher gas fees as much, but I do think Solana is still the retail chain. I think an ETF isn't gonna make retail participants excited to speculate on Ethereum and pay those huge transaction fees, but I do think we now have a very nice balance between these three assets of Bitcoin, Ethereum, and Solana, and they all have their very strong individual narratives, and that's why they're the three assets I have in my portfolio for now. So we know that we have the regulatory clarity and narrative backup for a left translated cycle, but things are looking decent with macro as well. With the election coming up in November, only five to six-ish months away, I don't think we're gonna see anything crazy happen in macro. I think they're gonna keep running government deficits. I think these rate cuts aren't necessarily likely to happen until maybe after the election, but as long as the Fed stays paused, we have nothing to worry about because we know historically, Fed pauses are very good for markets. Inflation is remaining a little bit stubborn, but it's working its way down. As long as it continues its trajectory, I think risk assets can continue higher. The unemployment rate is slowly working its way up, but it's still under 4%, so no need for markets to panic there. And of course, we know Bitcoin and the S&P 500 are very correlated, and the S&P 500 looks pretty decent. It just retested its previous local high and looks like it might want to continue higher, and that agrees very nicely with the S&P 500's election year seasonality. So I would not be surprised if the government did whatever it took to keep the economy strong and keep risk assets elevated going into the election, and we can see that very clearly here when we average election years from 1949 all the way up to today, especially ones that had strong Q1s, which of course we saw this time around. And I know I keep showing this chart, but it's almost a reminder to myself to kind of zoom out and keep in mind that it's an election year and what normally happens under these circumstances. I think they're just gonna keep running government deficits. I think they're gonna keep stimulating the economy and they're gonna try to keep this party going until after the elections. And because Bitcoin is so correlated to the S&P 500 and Bitcoin now has this lovely regulatory clarity narrative alongside this upcoming Ethereum ETF bringing excitement to the entire space, I think it's a great combination for a left translated cycle. Speaking of left translated cycle, we don't have any signs of alt season quite yet. Bitcoin dominance is still holding above 54%. Maybe this Ethereum ETF will be the catalyst to really get this to break down again, because Ethereum is the largest asset after Bitcoin. So Bitcoin dominance is very inversely correlated to the performance of Ethereum. And if we go ahead and look at where Bitcoin is in my general value chart, again, this is just my views on the market currently, 
This is not what I believe for Bitcoin over the next few years. But right now, I think we're still in fair value if you have a long time horizon. If you're day trading, this is completely different. But if you have zero exposure and you want to put in 5%, 10% and slowly allocate, I don't think it's a terrible place as long as you're holding it for the long term. But of course, it's always important to remember there may be black swans and we could still trade lower this summer, even though that has become a lot less likely to me with what's happened recently with the Ethereum ETF and what we're seeing from the US government. And of course, when in doubt, zoom out, look at the big picture. Maybe this ETF doesn't end up getting the flows that we expect. Maybe something ends up blindsiding us and causing markets to sell off in the short term. But when you look at Bitcoin's chart on larger timeframes, currency devaluation is unlikely to slow down. And when you look at Bitcoin's trajectory since it was created, it's been up only aside the devaluation of that currency. And of course, if we look at the S&P 500 over the last 100 years, it's an up only chart. And I know a lot of people see this and their initial reaction is, oh my God, we're in a 100 year bubble. It's going to burst because of rates being elevated and the upcoming recession. But I think that all changes once you look at the chart of the national debt and the M2 money supply and put that alongside what's been happening with the S&P 500. So although the S&P 500 has gone parabolic over the past 50 years or so, the actual denominator we're pricing it in has also gone parabolic in its circulation. So even though the number on the S&P 500 looks very large, we are pricing it in something that keeps getting exponentially devalued. And I don't think that long term trend is going to change anytime soon. So, of course, there's going to be volatility along the way. Maybe we chop a bit more before we rally higher. But with the regulatory clarity we've seen and with this Ethereum ETF approval, I think the left translated cycle is now by far the most likely scenario for this cycle based on what we've seen recently. And that's why I'm making it my most likely scenario in terms of my mental framework as well. But of course, we'll still monitor other outcomes and be prepared for other things to occur. That's what the cash on the sidelines is for. But for now, I'm feeling pretty optimistic about this upcoming Ethereum ETF launch. And I think it's very likely that at the very least, it ends up being a buy the rumor, sell the news event. So I expect price to rally until we reach the actual launch date. But anyway, let me know what you expect. Are we in a left translated cycle or will we get blindsided by a black swan event? Would love to know what you guys expect. As always, thank you so much for the support on the recent videos. Thank you so much for watching and I'll talk to you soon.